two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap podcast. As always, I am your dynamic, erudite, exciting host, Stefan. And I am here as well. I'm Martin. <laughs> And uh, so for the month of June, and I think uh, June is is like like no month in the personifies like Sweden other than June for some reason. The Swedes do get very so we're a lot of the time during the year we're very closed and mm-hmm. secretive and no don't sit next to me on the bus. And June is the month where Swedes come out of their shell. Yeah, it has the national day and it has. Uh, midsummer, right? So really, it is uh, uh, it is a great month. It is a great month, and it's also kind of which is weird because like May is usually like the weather is pretty nice. In June, the weather can be is, is often quite cold and windy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> During midsummer, uh, it needs to rain. I think ten different times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean the I I think in the years I've lived here, there may have been one or two midsummers where it didn't rain at some point during the day. Uh, yeah. Because it's it's kind of a given that at some point in the afternoon, it's probably going to rain. Now, the two weeks prior will be just like sunny skies and warm every day, midsummer. It's going to be cold rain. Exactly. <laughs> but today, we are not celebrating midsummer. No. We're, we're just gonna, celebrating Sweden. We are celebrating Sweden. And this whole month, we're going to celebrate the beers of Sweden. Uh, so every episode will feature uh, different breweries, and we'll actually we're going to be talking about one brewery a lot in particular this month. But um, we're going to have a lot of different beers to talk about that are all made here in Sweden. Yes. Okay. So the first beer we have is Stockholm Brewing Company. It's the G and T Sour, a beer inspired by the classic combination gin and tonic. This sour ale is spiced with citrus zest, juniper berries. Uh, Chinchona bark and all the other flavorings that go with a good GT. I have no idea what chinchona bark is. Some sort of tree bark. Bark, uh huh. Okay, cool. Yeah. And comes in at a light, refreshing, um, it's like 4.2% or something like that. Yeah, 4.4%. Cool. Okay. I am a big gin and tonic fan. I love gin and tonics. It's probably. Like, if I had one cocktail to drink on a regular basis, it would be gin and tonics. Uh, I would choose old-fashioned, but gin and tonic is easier to make, so... Right, because it's just gin and tonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it smells, it smells extremely very, botanical. It's, yeah, it smells very citrusy and kind of get the, the juniper in there. Yeah. and uh, Her- Herbal. Very herbal, yeah. So it has a very promising aroma. Yeah, and the color is, I mean, it's pretty see-through. It's very, yeah. very, yeah, uh, bubbly through the center. You can see all these little, almost like champagne bubbles coming up through the center of the glass. Yeah, to be real gin and tonic, it would need to be clearer, but I, th- I think well, that's difficult. It is beer, to, and yeah. they haven't come up with clear beer yet, thank God. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a thing. It's going to be the thing? I think a hard seltzer, I guess that's as close to clear beer as we can get. No, hard seltzers aren't beer. Oh, they're horrible. Or I should say I haven't had one yet that I've liked. <laughs> Although I guess I need to try White Claw still. So the next time I go to the States, I'm going to gonna grab a case of White Claw to bring yeah. back. <laughs> you want to try it? Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Quite abrasive. Yeah. Um, it's a bit like drinking tonic. It is. It's kind of sour. Yeah. Um... I've had a couple of gin and tonic inspired beers before and have not really enjoyed them very much. No. So I did not have high hopes for this. <laughs> but is it, um, is it surpassing your expectations? It is. Um, that being said, it's still very thin and watery tasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's- so. I was just going it's, to say it's it's too too thin. It's almost kind of like a lightly carbonated water. Yeah. In the in the mouthfeel, uh, it's. I like the sour and I like the botanicals, but 
They just feel washed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's like, yeah, it's almost like if you make a gin and tonic and you dilute it way too much. Yeah, it kind of tastes like... Um, and you let you have too many ice cubes and then you wait for an hour and now it's just ice cubes. Yeah, yeah, water. you know what it is? It, it's, it's, it's after you finish your gin and tonic and the ice is just melts. Yeah. And so it's still flavored and a little bit of the alcohol is still attached to the, the glass and the But it's 90% the ice cubes. melted cubes. Right. Yeah. It, it kind of tastes like that. Yeah. I don't really get the gin and tonic much on this. Uh, yeah, I, I totally get the inspiration for it. I totally yeah. I, I very much get the inspiration for it. And um, I mean, this is from Stockholm Brewing Company, and they've done a lot of sour releases uh, in yep. the past. This kind of one of the up and coming breweries in, in Sweden, and they've they've done some okay beers. They're on the they're on the rise, I know. <laughs> uh, so I have hopes for them. But I don't think this is representative of their best. No, this work. this isn't the this isn't the one. <clears throat> mm. um, I'm now actually finding it hard to remember their best beers, but I've had a, a, a large number of Stockholm beers, and uh, they are semi high on my list of breweries. Yeah, yeah, I, I usually look forward to to what it is they're going to put out. Yeah. So I'm <clears throat> I was very excited to see this. And this is one of their first canned beers too. I think normally they put out bottles. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. Um, I'm finding it difficult to uh, to say anything else about this. Yeah, there's really not much to say. It's, there's washed out. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and give this a rating, and uh, and we'll, we'll move on then. Uh, what would you What would you give this? Gonna give it a low three. Oof. I am going to give it a two point five. Oh wow. Yeah. I, I just I don't, I don't. I mean, it's just so forgettable and so. Unexciting on every level that I just don't see. Uh, I, I I want to give it a higher rating, but I just can't. Yeah, I'm also finding it difficult. Like if someone were to ask me what would need to change for this to become a good gin and tonic beer, maybe I haven't had any good gin and tonic beers. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there there that's it might just not be our style. Even though well, we like the, the sour notes of it, and we like the. Well, here's the thing. So I would like to feel more of the citrus and juniper and uh, uh, chichona bark. Yeah. Um, because I feel like it's kind of there, but it's so in the background that your first sip is like, ooh, that's, there's a nice zesty citrus note, but then it yeah. just gets washed away so fast by the lack of body in the beer itself that the aftertaste is... Um, more like a carbonated water sourness from the CO two in the in the carbonated water than it is like uh, zestiness from yeah. the the citrus and the juniper and the and the bark. So yeah, I would say that the properly made gin and tonic is quite flavorful, right? Uh, and and not not that watery. Like the no. tonic gives it quite a, a body. Yeah. Um, so I I think this would do better as like a seven percent. Fuller beer. I mean, I would. Maybe. I could go six, five, six percent somewhere in there. I think. Maybe. I think seven percent might be a little, a little too high, but it definitely needs to be a much fuller body beer. But I mean, a gin and tonic beer can afford to feel boozy. A it's little a, bit. It's a, a gin bit. and tonic. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, let's uh, take a break, and then we'll come back and try the next beer. Yes. The Mulberry Boys. Every Friday night on the show, you better know they keep it tight. ETL is back and the J-Strom's in the zone. Introduce the co-host, he doesn't do it alone. PCZ is about to hold court. You know he's on the headset, you can hear him snort. Pop culture movies, TV shows and games. Rotten Tomatoes reviews news and Blu-rays. Foggy don't play around, he will bust a drop fast. Welcome to the Entertainment Landfill Podcast. The Jason and Steven Show. It's the Jason and Steven Show. What? what? The Jason and Steven Show. It's the Jason and Steven Show. Hi. 
Have you ever wondered what so-called family films will scar your kids forever? Put, putting four and five-year-olds in front of this movie, it's like, if they didn't know what death was before this, they're going to know it after it. They're going to know it after it, and they're going to be freaking terrified. And they're going to be questioning you. Yeah. Or do you have the slight suspicion that your loved one has a cold, dead heart? Yeah, the Dark Knight has got like, all the orphans, and like, oh no, we're going to die. They did not build up those orphans at all. In my head, I was like, kill them. Then look no further, the His Film, Her Movie podcast is the show for you. It's the movie podcast that celebrates the contrasting cinematic tastes of its hosts. So join Jordan and Lauren every week on their unique journey through the land of the silver screen. So if you're looking for a few laughs, some fun film related chat, then get involved. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, the next beer, and I'll let you introduce this one. We're back, and Stefan has, uh, <coughs> I think he t- is trying to uh, trick me up in some way. This is a I'm beer, not. This is a beer that I used to buy religiously every year. Yeah. It is the Grebestad Lunator, a uh, Dunkel Double Bock, I think. My book. It, it's some kind of book. It's beer. a double book from uh, Grebstad Bigri. Yes. So double, and, and it's a, a dark double yeah. book. Some double books are, are light. And, and up until maybe 2015 or so, I used to buy this every year. I, I bought it it's the same way. I bought it like every year because I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I've ever checked it in. <laughs> uh-huh. and, and in the beginning, like in when I just became a beer nerd, this was... Uh, high note for me it, exactly because there weren't a lot of other breweries doing these kind of you know rich bold kind of beers at the time no uh, and I, I remember trying it and really liking it and then I talked to some beer nerds and they're like ew that thing and I'm like All right, maybe you're not supposed to like that one <laughs> yeah, but it, <laughs> maybe it's not cool enough to with like... beer nerds we're not supposed to like the traditional German lager yeah. styles it's just not hip uh, and um, I I have such a love for the old Celebrato Double Bock. It's, it's such it's, a good beer. Yes, yeah. and I and, remember uh, thinking that the Grebestad Lunater was like approaching Celebrato territory, which is yeah. uh, really, really good. So just when, I, uh, when you told me about this one, I said, oh, I've had that one a lot of times. So you said, yeah. I know, yeah. with that sneak, sneaky face. Well, what was so funny was because... Like, I, I looked online. Oh, actually, what happened was I was looking at um, Beerizer. Yeah. And it shows your check ins. And it's like one, two, three, four yeah, check ins. 2015, 2014, 2013, yeah. 12, 11, 10. And you give it a four every time. And so I was kind of like, well, that's interesting. You haven't had it in a few years. I would really like to hear how uh, you feel about it today. Yeah. And it's, um, so it's not to trip you up, it's just to see, like, something that I used to, you used to really like. Does it still hold up? Does your, does your palate change in a way that makes you not approve of this as much? It probably has, but... I don't know. It smells amazing. The aroma is very caramelly. It's so much caramel and raisin and uh, or dates, yes. you know, kind of kind of smell. Roasty. Oh, I think it just smells absolutely so good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try it. All right. Cheers. cheers. What's the uh, ABV? 7.9. Oh, that's low. That's lower than I expected. I think it's still pretty good, man. Yeah. Is it? Is it great? No, I mean, I don't think I love it as much now as I did back then. I agree, but it's not a bad beer by any no, stretch. No, no, no. I think that the, the caramel notes and the roastiness is still there. It's still very um, flavorful and enjoyable. That's a long aftertaste. Mm-hmm. That's that's good. That's quite rare with uh, malty lagers. Yeah. Um, I mean, the... The only kind of downside is that it's a little, a little thin, but it's not supposed to be like a uh, a really rich, thick beer. It's supposed no. to be a little, like I said, it's a lager. It should be a little. Exactly, it's not um, a thick, bold yeah. imperial stout. It's a, it's yeah. a double book. It, it's like it's, 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 just, it's what it says it is on the package, and it's quite frankly, it's still really, really good. <laughs> Yeah, so I think with the or with the traditional styles, there's the traditional book, sometimes 
and I think my book is my some, bok, yeah. some kind of variation. Then there's Dunkel book, which is yeah. this color, and then there's double book, which goes in like two different directions, but they're both double books, the light and the dark ones. Yeah, I never really understood why why those were always clumped together. Maybe that's changed now. Maybe there's a Dunkel doppel book and a, well, there's a, um, and a Helles doppel book. Uh, could be. Uh, so like um, Rimelov with oh oh did a, a double. Uh, Double block, yeah, and it was like eleven percent, and it was the lighter version. Yeah, that, I remember that. That was yeah. I, I like that one. Yeah, I like, really love that one. I bought a couple extra bottles just to yeah. hold on to. <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, the amazing style ice book. Oof. I love <laughs> ice books. I do love ice box as well, but they're they can be intense. They can be intense, <laughs> and they're more difficult to find than the more expensive. Yeah, they don't usually come out with a lot of them. Although there's been. Kind of a surge coming out of the um, the Netherlands with uh, De Morsluttel and uh, there's a Belgian company as well that's done a couple of ice box, but they're hit outcha the owl yeah hit outcha, but they're coming in like twenty five yeah, centiliter yeah. one of them shaped like a in a glass uh, bottle that's shaped like a skull. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this beer is the best beer that Grebestad makes. Mm. A lot of their regular assortment is has not kept up with yeah. uh, the taste revolution. Really, I, I would say this probably is the best thing they put out. Yeah, um, it's the thing that I've uh, gravitated back to. Whereas there are other beers I've not looked at very much at all. I will say I noticed that their bottle has changed because it used to be the the textured multi angle. Um, Really? Bottle, yeah, yeah. Like, this is just a regular brown glass bottle now, whereas previously it was a much more textured kind of kind of bottle. Huh. Yeah. I don't remember that, but um, uh, the Lunato. It's called uh, Lunato because it is the double box that they brew during the first full moon of the year. That so, would be keeping in tradition with beers that need to be delivered in in the spring because uh, yes. the Bach is a spring. Beer style exactly. uh, in Germany. A saison as well. Yeah. Yeah. They they want us to uh, to pour the beer in a cognac uh, snifter. snifter. I don't know that it deserves a cognac snifter. <laughs> I think these little tulip glasses are doing just fine. Maybe. Because it, it does smell. I just can't get over the smell. It is so good. It's it, like smell, it smells better than it tastes. Um, yeah. But I think that the double box often do smell better than they taste. Um, I think they have a lot of roast notes and rye bread and uh, oh yeah, yeah things like that, uh, like dark syrup kind of. And then the flavors are often tasty, but they're never like as rich as the smell of the beer itself. No. It's interesting because I've had uh, really old barley wines, like uh, mm -hmm. 10, 20 plus years old that smelled exactly like this yeah good <laughs> so it's uh, it's almost a little bit like dusty like the more I the more I drink it the more I like it honestly yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can have a couple more of these uh, to be fair I, I, I I'm still quite enjoying this it's it's very how should I say it available both in uh, in flavor and aroma yeah but also it's not a rare beer no, it's not. It's very easy. You can you can find this. It's around for a few months after it comes out every year yeah. because it's just not flying off the shelf. But I think the people that really enjoy it probably are really glad when it comes out every year. Yes. And I um, I'm probably gonna start buying it again. I gotta say, I yeah. I think this is a really nice, refreshing, rewarding beer. And the more you drink it, I think the more the flavor builds and it really lingers. And there's this uh, nice toasty. Um, liquor kind of flavor like not liquor in the fact of like booziness but like liquor in the like if you reduce something down kind of uh, I don't know how to describe this almost licorice kind of yeah. You know? yeah there's a little bit of that um, so I have a historical four on many mm -hmm. of the vintages and I am going to give this a 3.75 so I'm decreasing it a little bit I am also giving this a 375. I think that's just exactly where it, where it should be. 
and, and it might be that my my taste buds when it comes to this kind of aroma i've started to expect a thicker fuller richer mm-hmm. body and flavor maybe the aroma is like fooling me <laughs> well i think i think the aroma and the color and like when you swish it around in the glass it looks like it's going to be kind of a rich a thicker beer than, yes. than what you get so i think uh, I think that's what deceives you. But then, as you get through the beer itself, I think the the flavors really build quite a lot, and uh, the the thinness kind of falls away because the yeah. the richness and the in the in the depth of the beer itself is so rewarding. Um, so yeah, I I'm really enjoying this. Uh, all right, so you can find us online at whatsontappodcast.com. dot uh, com. We are Pod Syndicate. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Spotify, I- iTunes. Yes, wherever you can find fine quality podcasts in the world, you can find what's on tap podcast. Yes, at the top of the charts. Yes, always. So until next time, drinking it up. This podcast is part of the Pod Syndicate family. For more criminally compelling shows, articles, and conversations, head to wearepodsyndicate.com.